with all of the talk about the different reports about what's going on between TNA and Destination America and their relationship now and going forward, you know, there's been a lot of debate, a lot of discussion, but I think it's safe to say that everybody was thrown off guard by the announcement made yesterday that Ring of Honor has reached an agreement with Destination America to begin airing their shows Wednesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern starting, I believe it is, June 3rd. Right before Impact, that's right. I think this is something that is suffice it to say nobody saw coming. Nobody. Hell, hats off to ROH and Destination America for being able to keep that under wraps. Something that's really hard to do. <laughs> they managed to do it. So, you know, now, of course, you've got a lot of people saying this and saying that, trying to put this spin on it or that spin on it, using this as an example for this or a reason for that and all this other BS. And frankly, I've seen a lot of BS said about it. So let's try and remove ourselves from the BS and try and take an honest and fair look at this and see what Ring of Honor uh, reaching this agreement with Destination America actually means for all parties involved. Let's try and do that. Let's start off with Ring of Honor. This is a great deal for Ring of Honor. This is pretty much to me at this particular time a win-win-win godsend deal for them. It really, really is. I just can't see at this particular moment how in any way, shape, or form this is a bad deal for Ring of Honor. The people involved in the company like Joe Koff deserve a lot of credit for this one because they accomplished a lot with this deal. They're able to expand from just being a semi-syndication model to now being on cable television. And this is significant for a couple of reasons. Number one, they get a consistency of time slot. Whereas with the semi-syndication that they do run, where their shows could air on Friday night or Saturday night or Sunday night at all different varying times, usually late in the evening or very, very early in the morning, like 1 or 2 a.m., now people are going to be able to say, we know that it's going to come on Destination America Wednesday nights, 8 p.m. Eastern. That consistency of time slot allows you to direct your advertising in a specific general direction. You're promoting your marketing in a specific general direction. It gives you a consistency of message, and it gives you a consistency in terms of expectations for the fans in terms of when they know to be able to tune into that product on a weekly basis. This also allows ROH crucially to get in front of a new audience and when I say semi syndication that's really what it was it was not a pure syndication model in the sense that they could sell their product to every television station known to man they were a part of the Sinclair Broadcasting Group that's who owns them so they're sh being shown on Sinclair stations. Sinclair doesn't own every station obviously in the United States so there are certain regions that ROH is more well represented on television than others and now you have a chance with them getting away from just being semi-syndication to now being on cable television, you have the chance to get in front of a new audience because a lot of these people, you know, some obviously that watch TNA are going to know what ROH is because of the internet, but there are plenty of other people perhaps that do not. Though there are some perhaps casual viewers at Destination America that have to watch Impact Wrestling, you know, now every Friday nights, at least for the moment, uh, because it's what's on, it leads into something else, or it was on after something else. Now it's a chance for ROH to get in front of that audience as well. And in some cases, be able to get multiple chances to be able to be exposed to a certain audience, because there may be people that have both a Sinclair station and Destination America. Multiple chances to be able to get in front of eyeballs. So you have all types of new potential exposure for ROH. This also puts more money in ROH's coffers. Obviously, new television deal, more money. And God knows it's a company that freaking needs it, especially because Sinclair seems dead set against putting any real money into the product. You know, that old saying, you got to spend some money to make some money. And a lot of people like to talk that good shit, but at the end of the day, a lot of the businesses are cheap as hell, and they don't like to spend money in order to make more money. So now here's a chance to put some additional money into ROH's coffers, so it's more money available for the company as a whole. 
from a bottom line standpoint, it's hopefully more money that could be used to improve the production values of the product and the company, which is something that significantly needs to occur. It's also potentially a situation that could allow for more money to be available for the talents. And hopefully the talents are in a position and in a situation where they're able to, willing to, and confident enough in themselves to be able to go get more money. Because now you've got this product being run again, basically, every single week. So that's more exposure. That should mean a new type of deal and more money for these wrestlers. Another good thing, though, about this, that unlike TNA and their deal with Destination America, it seems like Ring of Honor is still going to have control over their product from a creative standpoint. I could argue some ways where that would be good or bad, but at the end of the day, you're not having the network telling you how you should be booking your product. You're being allowed to run your product the way that you see fit. And having that type of autonomy and control over your product is critical for a company like ROH, in my opinion. It really is. And you also have to look at this, too, from a standpoint of, at least for the time being, I expect this to change at some point, but at least for the time being, ROH is not going to have to incur additional production costs by having to put on a show specifically for Destination America and then putting on something different for their syndication. They're going to be able to run those syndicated shows and then be able to put them on Destination America uh, for one hour, 8 p.m. Eastern, every Wednesday night. This is just a fantastic, at least at the moment, win-win all the way around deal for Ring of Honor. Hats off to them because this was a big deal for them in my opinion. Now we look at it from Destination America's standpoint. This is another chance for them to use wrestling to build their network. Now, this is something a lot of networks have done successfully over the years. You go back to the 50s, uh, the birth of television, the growth of television in a lot of ways came off of the backs of professional wrestling. Professional wrestling was some of the highest rated shows you had like on the old DuPont network with people like Vern Gagne, what have you. This is something that's gone on for generations of television. You use wrestling to follow up certain shows. That way you can get those wrestling fans to tune into the show before. And then you get them to stay afterwards for something else that you want to promote that you want to get eyeballs in front of. You know, this is the same thing that Ted Turner did that, as he said before, in some ways, helped build his cable empire. Other people have said it because it's true. Off of the backs of 6.05 to 8.05 Eastern every single Saturday evening on TBS, the Superstation. You beam that shit out. You got wrestling fans tuning in a little bit before, and then afterward, maybe they're staying. You know, it's what USA did with the WWF way back in the day. I mean, it's not hard to figure out. Now here's a chance for Destination America, a second chance maybe, for them to be able to do that. It's also a chance for them to get a return for less investment. And look, one of the things that people are going to talk about is, why would you want ROH if they have fewer viewers than, let's say, Impact Wrestling? We don't know how much less the viewership would be, in theory, with uh, ROH compared to uh, TNA in that same type of time slot. However, let's just say for argument's sake, let's say that Destination America got half of the viewers for a quarter of the cost of what it takes to run Impact Wrestling for two hours every Friday night, at least for now and then Wednesday night going forward. So half of the numbers for a quarter of the cost. That makes quite a bit of business sense. And you can see where a lot of networks would want that. Yeah, you would get fewer eyeballs, but you're going to spend a lot less in order to get those fewer eyeballs. It's a cost um, justification that is easy to make. It also helps Destination America prepare to move on from Impact Wrestling, which seems inevitable now, obviously, I would think. Uh, that whole talk of them canceling them heading into the fourth quarter of 2015 seems all the more likely now, especially with this ROH deal. It also gives them a chance to leech off of uh, TNA's audience and get some of that audience on ROH throughout the rest of 2015. Now, here's an instance where you're using wrestling to build up another wrestling show. Same thing that networks have done for years in terms of they want to, got a show that they want to get over so to speak. They put it on right before, let's say, Raw, or right after Raw. How many times has USA been able to do that successfully over the years with Raw every Monday night? They'll put on a show like this or that or every damn thing else that they want to get over, like I think like a burn notice or something. They'll introduce the show right afterwards, get somebody interested in it, then they'll flip it to a different night to grow the network overall in terms of its audience. So now you have a chance with 
Ring of Honor on Destination America where they're going to be leading into Impact, where you get some of those Impact people that maybe don't watch ROH because they don't get them in semi-syndication or they're not really familiar with the company. Now those eyeballs will perhaps be there earlier. Now you're exposing them to the ROH product and perhaps you're getting them hooked on the ROH product. So that way, when you do drop TNA and Impact Wrestling, you can put ROH in that slot and you're maybe not losing as much as you would anticipate in terms of viewership. It gives you several months to play around. And you also have the flexibility, if it doesn't really work, out with ROH, just like you don't feel like as a network it's worked out with um, TNA, you can move on from them, it sounds like, at the end of the year as well. What this also means, though, is that Destination America is a loser network. This whole notion of companies just don't want to advertise on wrestling, well, whose fault is that? Oh, TNA's on DNA, do not advertise this. Okay. In sales, one of two things happens. Either you sell somebody on why they need to buy your product, or they sell you on why they don't have to buy their product. And anything else anybody else tries to tell you or spin you on is complete and total bullshit. So if Destination America cannot successfully validate and justify the cost that they sink into TNA and their Impact Wrestling show, because they can't sell the advertising space, that's on Destination America's ass, not TNA. That's the network's fault, not TNA. And even when you try to look at this from a bigger picture standpoint, let's just go away from the advertising space within that two-hour window of impact every single week. Part of the whole thing of putting wrestling on your network is to use it to build your network overall. So, let's say that this wrestling show is your highest rated show, but at the same point in time, one of your lowest advertising revenue generators, what do you do? You use the show like so many other successful networks not named Destination America have done over the years. You put the shows that you want to get over before and after, then you take the sh wrestling show. Then those audiences get built up. You make more money off of the advertising revenue from those shows. You take those shows, you put them on other nights, and then you do the same thing with them to try and get other shows over. It's a trickle-down, spread-the-wealth-around type of effect, and it's a way to justify that cost in terms of the bigger picture. What it also means that Destination America is what they'll continue to be, a small potatoes type of network. Having this type of attitude and mindset is ridiculous. It's all narrow focus, narrow vision, and small-minded. It's not just about the advertising you could sell within the Impact Wrestling two-hour slot every week, you idiots. It's about how you can use it to increase your overall viewership, your overall audience, which means it would trickle over to other shows you would think, which you would think would mean that your incompetent advertising sellers would be able to at least be able to stumble into some higher ad buys, and therefore more money from your freaking network. But probably not. What this shows me is that Destination America wants wrestling in a certain way, but they don't want everything that's associated with wrestling in a certain way, and they're buying into the bullshit and excuses that are given for why wrestling is a good yet bad thing to have on your network. It shows me that maybe they shouldn't be involved in the wrestling business and that they're never going to grow their network, and that's not really a surprise to me based off of what I see. I mean, for Christ's sakes, your Destination America, yet half of your shows are about paranormal or other haunting crap, which, again, is the type of stuff I'm into, and yet I'll never watch your freaking network, and I most certainly won't pay the premium price in order to get your freaking channel as part of my cable package. So I understand from Destination America's standpoint, but it just kind of speaks to the incompetence of that network, frankly. But then we get to TNA's standpoint. And honestly, what does this really mean? It means the people running the company are fucking morons. This is not something new. This is not some surprising phenomenon. We all know that Dixie Carter and the people running the company are fucking idiots. Again, this is not something new. This is not some magical revelation. We all know this. This is well established. Or this is just another indication of proof, as if you needed any more. I understand that this whole deal with Destination America kind of came about due to desperation, which was the desperation of 
Spike TV wasn't renewing Impact, even though they said it wasn't a big deal and that that wasn't true. It actually did happen, TNA and TNA fans. It fucking happened. But you sit there and you outsource your, yourself to United Talent in the hopes that they'll land you a good television deal. But instead, they got you a crappy television deal out of panic. They stuck you in a shitty-ass time slot on Friday night, and you agreed to it because you're morons. They used to call it the Friday night death slot for a reason. Out of the five days of the regular work week, the day by far that you least want to have your show on is Friday night in prime time. This is historical documented television ratings fact. So Destination America is going to put you on the worst performing night of the freaking week. Wouldn't you think that would be something that you would try to hammer out in the context of of the negotiations of your television contract. And then the fact that you signed a deal where Destination America was able to include an out clause after basically nine months. I mean, there's really no chance for them to give you any type of serious commitment at all. It's like they kind of went with one feet in instead of diving headfirst with both feet in. And then on top of that, the ridiculousness of not being able to make sure that there was a no complete or an exclusivity clause in the contract. You would think this is basic shit 101. When would you ever see Vince McMahon allow another company's wrestling product on his freaking network that he's running Raw on or SmackDown on? Do you know why that wouldn't happen? Because he knows it's not a good thing for his fucking company. And he's at least smart enough to understand that if you want me, I'm going to have some goddamn leverage. And one way I'm going to have some goddamn leverage is I'm going to make sure that no other wrestling programming is airing on this freaking network that my shit's running on. Why would I give a forum to a, another company to potentially take away my market share? Now, I wish you would have done that with the UFC, but that's a different story for another time. So TNA has basically put themselves in a situation where now somebody else, a company like Ring of Honor, in the same business as them, which is professional wrestling, can come in and siphon away their viewership and divert some of Destination America's resources away from Impact and towards Ring of Honor in their show. And this is a good thing? Seriously, this is a good thing for professional wrestling? This is a good thing for TNA? What the Fuck our people smoking! This means that Impact has about three and a half months of shelf life on Destination America, period. Now, shit, that's always subject to change, but the only reason that Destination America would bring in Ring of Honor to, as Joe Koff said, leech off of TNA, is to indeed leech off of TNA, try to take some of their viewership, so that way when they drop Impact Wrestling and TNA off of their fall and winter programming lineup like a bad fucking habit, they'll minimize the loss in viewership and therefore be able to increase the margins of the money they save in terms of expenses by getting ROH as opposed to Impact. Running a, perhaps a shorter show on a better night of the week. This is just, it just shows you how fucking stupid the people involved with TNA are. This is not a good deal. All these people are saying, oh, this is a great thing for professional wrestling. So they're running on the same night, TNA, as ROH, NXT, and I think Lucha, right? So they got three other wrestling shows on the same night. And all the while, one of them is a direct lead into them on the same damn network. When in the hell does this ever happen? Think about how stupid this would be if way back in the day, ECW would have been brought on by, let's say, uh, TNT, by Turner, to run immediately before WCW. That's not a good thing. There's a reason this shit doesn't happen. Period. TNA, out of desperation, out of fear of what could happen if they didn't hurry up and get one, got themselves a television deal. And oh boy, did they get themselves a television deal. They got themselves a shitty, terrible, horrible, no leverage having, sorry ass television deal. Thank you, United Talent. You knocked this one right out of the fucking park. It just shows you that TNA is run by idiots, plain and simple. 
And to the people that are sitting there and saying, trying to put this positive spin on this, that this is a good thing, this is going to be wonderful things for Impact Wrestling, how the fuck can you not see the writing on the wall? So followed up by, from memos leaking about Destination America not picking up Impact after September to the news that another wrestling company is coming on that network to the fact that Destination America to begin with started off Impact Wrestling on Friday night, the worst fucking night of the week. They put them on Friday night. And now they're only moving them to Wednesday night just so that way ROH now comes in and <laughs> gets to siphon away some of their viewers for an hour before you go to Impact, a product that you don't give a fuck about. How is this good, people? To those saying, well, this is creating more opportunities for the boys and for the business and this is more exposure. For a couple of months and then what? ROH is going to continue to run a one-hour show on Destination America every week, and then TNA, who knows what the fuck will happen with Impact Wrestling, if any damn thing, this is a good thing? No, it's not a good thing, it's fucking ridiculous. And anybody that argues this is a good thing is fucking ridiculous. From the Vince Russos and all the other jackasses that clearly don't understand what this means and can't, for whatever reason, refuse, they refuse to blind unblind themselves, I guess I would say, from the reality of the situation. If this doesn't tell you the truth about what's going on with Impact Wrestling, in terms of its feature on Destination America, I don't know what does. As always, shit is subject to change. But if you really, really think that this is a good thing for TNA, if you really, really think that this is a good thing for professional wrestling, whatever ganja you're smoking, Send some of it to Richmond, because God knows I fucking need it to be able to see it through your freaking rosy-colored glasses. You're bringing in a wrestling company to siphon away viewers over the next few months in order so that way, come the end of September, you can drop Impact, move ROH into that time slot, or keep them in the time slot they're in. It allows Destination America to get some of the benefits of having wrestling while spending less money. It makes more money for ROH, gets them an additional level of exposure, and that's a good thing in terms of the whole argument of, well, it's only for 26 weeks. Okay, so what does that have anything to fucking do with whether or not they would drop Impact at the end of September? Maybe by the end of 2015, Destination America would decide they don't want to be in wrestling at all. And now not only does Impact Wrestling not have an o a home, but ROH loses its home on Destination America. This is a good thing. Get the fuck out of here. It's a good thing for Ring of Honor. I give you that. It speaks to the stupidity of Destination America and the incompetence of Destination America. But most importantly of all, it speaks to the stupidity and the incompetence of TNA as a company.